victorious Wisconsin Badgers are with us now. Uh, per custom, we're going to ask the head coach, Greg Gard, to make a statement on the game, and then we will go to questions for all four gentlemen on the dais. Greg, please. Thank you. Um, as I told the team in the locker room, in the last, you know, this game was kind of a microcosm of our season from a standpoint of November, December, January. It was like three minutes ago being down seven or eight, whatever we were, and this group just would not quit, would not give in. We knew we had a, some fight left in us, and eventually the ball was going to go in, and, and uh, we were able to get some stops and key rebounds at opportune times. And um, I can't be more proud of a group of young men that have withstood in every challenge that's come at them, every adversity piece that's been thrown their way. Um, you know, they've done a, they're an unbelievable group to coach. And they, they listen, they respond, they work. It's not always perfect. Um, tonight wasn't perfect, but, um, you know, it's a group that um, has really bonded together. And when you have a group that's this tight and growing tighter by the day, I think you can have some special things happen. And, and like I said, the resiliency of this group is second to none in terms of their will to work for each other and, and try to find a way. And that's what they did tonight. With that, I think we'll take your questions. Yep, questions start. Two on the right-hand side. Coach, uh, how cool was it that it was a Wisconsin player that uh, sank the winning shot? Well, they're all Wisconsin players. Um, I, I know what you mean. My Bronson's from the state, from La Crosse. But uh, there's a, everybody else, the other 16 that were on the trip with us here have contributed and helped us. This was a team win, and obviously Bronson hit two big shots there at the end. Um, you know, and that was the thing I tried to tell him, keep shooting. I know the last couple games the ball hasn't gone in like he's wanted it to, but he's too good of a shooter, and, and we've got too good of offensive players at spots that I've seen him do enough things that you just can't lose confidence in him and tell him to keep working, and, and it'll turn out okay. And, and uh, he did. I mean, those two he hit at the end, it was a busted play in, the, in that – possession with about 11 to go and um, he was able to make a play and obviously tie it we weren't looking to tie we were looking to just get a quick two and then play from there but um, yeah see and then the shot there at the end um, just how we just how we drew it up right guys Ethan made the pass and we had two options on it and obviously it always looks good when the ball goes in but uh, like I said he's a big time player and he's hit a lot of big shots for us through his career and hopefully he's got a lot more in him go ahead for Bronson, uh, two quick questions here. First, uh, did you know the shot, the winning shot was good when it left at your hand? And secondly, what's going through your head when the ball has gone through the net and your teammates are dogpiling on top of you? <laughs> uh, well, I told Ethan before the play even started, you know, I knew I wanted the ball. So I went up to him and told him, pass it to me if I'm open. And uh, I got open. He did a great job of hitting me. And to answer your question, I knew it was going in before, before it even left my hand, because that's a shot I practice quite a bit um, pregame with Nigel Hayes one-on-one. Um, -on -one, and I do a lot of step backs in the corner, and I just let it fly. And I knew it was going in. So, and um, I can't really explain the feeling after I hit it. Um, I think it was my first real game winner. Um, well, kind of like that. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of excitement. Left-hand side, gentlemen. Ethan, you said last week, you know, the excitement of playing in the NCAA tournament, you watched it your entire life. What's it mean to be part of what now will be an NCAA lore, that, that winning shot and being on the floor with that? Uh, I mean, it's something really special to be with this group of guys that, I mean, you care for just like family. And uh, I mean, credit to coach for drawing up the play, credit to all the, all the guys on the floor. I mean, Vito took some guys with him, Nigel took some guys with him, and then left Bronson um, open to create a shot and uh, credit Bronson for making the shot. In the back row, Dawn. Greg, I don't know if you expected to uh, get the ball back, you know, with four seconds or, or how, with any time left. Um, What's the process there of you know letting it play out or advancing it, taking a timeout? How far in advance were you thinking of it, or was it just a gut feel? Well, the the first thing was the play Showalter made to get the the charge was huge. I mean, and that's why he that kid's on the floor and why he's in this program. The toughness he brings, the uh, the glue that he is in between the other the bricks in our team, so to speak. Um, that that was a, that was as big a time play as you know that one won't be talked about as much. It should be. I mean, that was a, a huge defensive play. 
But then to get back to your play, we I actually contemplated I was going to take a timeout, but then Nigel came running over to me and said, hey, should we, let's advance it and then take it. And I said, all right, we'll, we'll do that. And uh, that's what we decided to do. And uh, fortunately, we were able to you know get further far enough down the floor um, to be able to get to that timeout. Um, and uh, like I said, then it's a matter of, you know, at least you want to have a chance. That's when you give yourself a chance. And um, they ran what we wanted, what we talked about um, to perfection. So, um, you know, it's it always, like I said, it looks good when the ball goes in. It looks good when you can advance it as far as you can. Um, they, they did it very well in, a, in terms of the time we had to talk about it, uh, how we wanted to do it. Um, they executed it perfectly. Back to the left. Ethan, there's a lot of pressure on you in that situation inbound the basketball. Were there any nerves uh, to make sure that you got it in the right hand and, and, and made sure you got it in to give your, your teammates an opp opportunity to get a shot off? Uh, a little bit. I mean, obviously, you got to make a smart decision. We didn't have any timeouts left. But, um, I mean, I knew my personnel. I knew I was um, just going to hit the open guy. And, I mean, when coach trusts you to take the ball out, um, that puts confidence behind you as well. So. Uh, that was that was an easy pass for me to make, and Bronson just knocked it down. Up against the wall here on the right, gentlemen. For all four of you, can you really go back to Northwestern on January 12th and think about this moment right now? We'll start with Vito, come to Ethan, Bronson, and end here with uh, Greg. <clears throat> uh, yes, uh, it's definitely nice to see how far we've come from that from that moment, uh, and I think that was the most pivotal moment that we had as a team. Uh, that was the time where we really stepped back and uh, reevaluated ourselves and uh, really had to look in the mirror, each one of us individually, and see what we could do better. And so now, you know, that's, this is just a, uh, an example of how it's, how it's paid off for us. Uh, yeah, we had that players only meeting and um, we, we knew we were in danger of not making the NCAA tournament if we kept up the play. And I mean, we believed we'd be in the tournament. Um, it was just a matter of when we turned the season around. Just like Ethan said, um, <coughs> we knew we were at risk for you know not making the tournament. We didn't want to be that uh, only Wisconsin team in ho however many years not to make the tournament. So as leaders, we knew we all had to step up and call a team meeting and let all our feelings and emotions out. You know, being such a new team with new guys that haven't had as much experience. Um, so I thought that was very good for us. And after that, obviously the results showed for themselves, and uh, we just banded together really closely and. Uh, that's what we've been doing the past couple of games too. That's why we've been successful. So we just need to keep doing that. Cool. That's you want me to answer too? Yes, All right. Uh, I've always had confidence in them, even when we were one and four and nine and nine. And, and the thing that I've talked about, and they're probably tired of hearing me use the word process, but to stick to the process and not not deviate from the plan. And, and I saw a lot of good things when we were one and four that we were headed in the right direction. And a couple of those came down to the last minute of the game like like this and and we didn't come out on top you know we have mellow trimble hit a shot against us very similar situation tie game he hits one to, to to win it but i saw a lot of good things happening in that part of that process that we were getting better every day and rather than focus on the last 30 or seconds or a minute of a game i tried to focus on the main the other 50 60 70 possessions and what could we do better and how can we get better in those areas? And that's where they've, that's where they've grown so much. And then the, if you can get yourself in the right frame of mind and, and work through those things, uh, they practiced better, they worked harder, uh, they became closer off the floor, the locker room chemistry got better, and, and then eventually all those things started to show on a more consistent basis on the floor, and, and then results started coming from that. So like I said, I, I wasn't too concerned about it. I just tried to focus on every day and make sure they were in the same frame of mind. Don't worry about February or March we got to take care of December and January, and it's one day at a time, and that's what they've done. We are halfway through this session. We have two questions up. Go, please. Bronson, your, uh, your, your pregame ritual with, with Nigel, w when you work on that, how much are you consciously thinking about that exact type of scenario there? Um, I mean, I'm not really thinking too much about, you know, game winners or anything like that. I'm just thinking, you know, how am I – the rule is that we can't drive to the basket, so my only thought is how am I going to get the ball over, you know, 6'8", Nigel Hayes. So, you know, step backs and um, just watching Steph Curry, trying to emulate him, emulate him. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's not, nothing really more to it, really. In the back. This is for Coach. 
How long do you guys enjoy this until you start preparing for Notre Dame? Uh, we'll enjoy it tonight on the flight back home. Um, <clears throat> and then we'll start, I'll put together our plan with our staff on how we're going to approach the week. But, uh, you know, these guys have had two toe-to-toe -to -toe battles with Pittsburgh and now Xavier, two very physical games. And they've earned the, they earned the right to get here in this tournament. They've obviously earned their way through Friday and, and this one here tonight. So I, I always make sure that they get a chance to enjoy it. And we will, we'll work on that with the staff with Notre Dame, uh, maybe starting already on the flight home. But these guys, and we'll, we'll enjoy this for, you know, at least through tonight for sure. Left-hand side. Ethan, what's it, what's it like to experience a game like this after having to sit out all, all last year and, and know how your high school career ended? How, how is it like to celebrate a win like this? Uh, yeah, going back to high school, obviously I had a tough, tough out. We were undefeated and we lost that game. And then, um, but to, like you said, we like Vito and I were talking about it. Where obviously he contributed more than I did last year, but it wasn't as much as he wanted to, and obviously it wasn't as much as I wanted to. But I saw how fun it was and uh, experienced how fun it was uh, making a trip to the Final Four and the national championship. And I thought, you know, how special it would be if I was contributing more in, in, in another run like that. On the aisle. This question is for Coach. Uh, since you were named the permanent head coach of Wisconsin uh, and you're offered an extension, how do you feel about your job security right now? Did I get offered an extension already? <laughs> well, the, there's there's things wafting around oh. this this room and oh, check check the, the or guy in the red sweater. He's in control of the contract. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is the ink dry on it, Justin? Where the ink is dry, right? Okay. You know what? I, I've never worried about that. I didn't worry about the interim tag. One of the first things I told these guys, probably the second day. No, it was more than the second day. It was beyond that. I wait. I waited for it to come out in the media because I knew they were going to say the word audition. This was my audition for the job. And I told them the first day it came out the media, guys, it's not an audition. I'm not going to allow the next three, four months, whatever it is, impact what has happened in my career over the previous 26 years. And you're not going to allow that to creep into your mind, too. You're not playing for my job. We're going to work for each other. I want these guys to have the best experience possible. We only have one senior. Let's have Jordan Smith have the best senior year, the best experience he can have. And whatever happens down the road happens. But I was more focused on every single day and making sure these guys learned to work harder, practice harder, took care of the ball better, rebounded better. That was m what my focus was on. And they can attest to it because I've been a pain in their butt uh, a lot in terms of trying to play the right way and didn't worry about what was going to happen down the road for me. Um, since that's happened, I've been very outwardly thankful to them for what they've done for me and my family. Um, but that doesn't affect me. I, I've always had a one-year contract. They gave me a five now. I'm, wow. Um, but it doesn't change my approach. You know, I, like I said, I am still can be just as boisterous in those timeout huddles as I was when I had an interim contract. As now I have a five-year one. It doesn't change who I am, and, and, uh, and it never will. All the way in the back. Uh, Bronson, in, in the locker room, Zach said you have a flair for the dramatic. Um, is that uh, an accurate assessment of your, your style and mentality? Um, I mean, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I don't really know how to answer that, I guess. Um, I mean, I like, I like to have the ball in my hands in those kind of situations because I believe in myself and I know my coaches and teammates believe in me and that's what they did and it uh, turned out all right. Left-hand side. Coach Guard, why do you have so much confidence in Ethan to inbound a ball, a freshman, in, in that situation? Um, well, he's the biggest. He was the biggest on the floor, so he could see over guys. Um, also, in terms of the other four, if you looked at stats, he hasn't attempted a three-point shot yet this year. So that's his off-season project is going to work on his perimeter shooting. But he inbounds the ball against pressure. He does that most of the time. Um, <laughs> and with how we had our little set that I drew up in the uh, timeout um, configured, that's where I wanted guys at. So. Um, had it been something different come to my mind at that point in time, I might have switched people around. But he's been in that position, and his size, I think, helped to be able to look over guys. Now, obviously, they put a big guy on him, too, but he's been in that position 
maybe not on the sideline, but in the full court position. And um, just kind of the, the lineup I had at that time, that's where I wanted people at. Standing up on the right. How does this compare with the win last year against Kentucky? Who was the question for? Any, any of them. Yeah. Bronson, you were there? I was. Um, it's kind of hard to compare because, you know, it's two totally different teams and two totally kind of different games. Um, but, I mean, I'm just so proud of how far we've come. And, you know, no one really believed that we'd get to this point. And for us to all collectively just believe in each other, and that's how we got this done. And, and it feels great to get to this point with a group of guys that I can call my family. So, um, yeah, it's a great feeling. All the way in the back. For, for Bronson. Bronson, I apologize if you've been asked this before, but on that last play, I know you weren't the first option, but did, it, did you think you were going to get a clean look, and were you as aggressive tonight as you had talked about being yesterday? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was pretty disappointed in myself, just the way I've been, the way I've been playing, not only the way I've been shooting, but just, you know, I haven't been being the floor general, the facilitator that I can be. You know, I'm way too good to, you know, not, not be a facilitator like I can be. Um, but like you were saying before, um, I knew I was going to get the ball, and what exactly was your question again? What was the first part of that question? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I told Ethan, if I'm open, hit me. And I kind of already preset what I was going to do in my head, um, just to step back, corner three. And that's something I practice quite a bit. So it um, felt great coming off my hands, and I knew I was going in. We are under three <coughs> minutes to go. Two questions are up. Go, please. You want to arm wrestle over it? No, I'm good. Okay. okay. I would lose that. All right. Uh, this for Coach Guard. When you guys were down with not by nine with under six minutes left, uh, what thoughts were going through your head, and what does it say about the resiliency of the team to come back and finish like they did? Well, it was only a three-possession game, and that's what I thought if we could get to where it was within five, we can chip four off of that, um, that we, you know, within the last minute and a half or so that we would have a chance. Um, you know, I was able to mix and match a little bit with a little bit of pressure to stir the pot a little bit. Uh, with two possessions, um, even though we didn't turn them over, I thought we disrupted a little bit there. And um, then we have to make plays. You know, we had to make plays and we got stops. I mean, to be able to hold this team, it's been averaging 80 <laughs> points a game to 17 below their average. And then obviously individually, Blewett is a heck of a player to hold him, you know, almost 10 below his average. Defensively, this team has grown so much um, in the last, you know, month. And really here over this weekend, these are two – probably maybe two of the best defensive performances we've had all year. And then you combine to be, get the ball to go in a little bit in the second half, uh, even though we can shoot the free throw line better. Um, you know, that's, that's where you always want to give yourself a chance in the last four minutes. So uh, that's where I thought this group has grown so much. November, third, December, down nine, they might have wilted and, and waved the white flag. This, this, time, this time of year, they're not doing that. They, they've grown and matured in a lot of ways. And, um, obviously, that's the result. Back to the left. Ethan, when, when Bronx tells you to get him the ball, is it easier to inbound the ball when, when you know somebody wants it and somebody is ready to, to take a shot like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, Nigel, Nigel and I were talking right before Bronx came up to me about wh where he wanted it. So, um, I mean, I, I was kind of waiting. Uh, for Nigel to go open because he came up to me and then uh, when Bronson approached me and said that he wanted it that that's something special to have two leaders that want the ball when it's crunch time and um, I think that's that's a testament to both those guys and how much they've grown anything else for the back oh, all back. the way in the back I see you <laughs> can't miss the head Greg um, I'm just curious Showalter didn't do much offensively tonight I guess in terms of points but how, if you've been asked this before, I apologize. How big was that charge he drew um, against a, a pretty good player who, who can get to the rack? Yeah, I, I wasn't asked about it, Jeff, but I brought it up before before you came in. Um, that, that was the biggest play maybe is the three. You know, it doesn't get talked about and won't get talked about as much, but, um, you know, that was huge to be able to draw that charge. And, and he even negated a, an attempt to try to get by him earlier and earlier in the possession and then to be able to get that. I mean, that's why the – that's why that kid's in the program. I mean, he, he does a lot of things that don't show up in the stat sheet, and that was an example of one of them. 
Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much, and congratulations. Thank you. Go get Notre Dame.